Hi and welcome to our uh, study in the book of Proverbs. Tonight we're going to start in chapter 2 verse 11, but let's read a little bit before that. Let's read what we ended up last time with. Um, Proverbs 2 verse 6 says, For the Lord gives wisdom, and from his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. He stores up effective counsel for the upright, and is like a shield for those who live with integrity. To guard against the paths of the righteous, or to, I'm sorry, to guard the path of the righteous, and to protect the way of his pious ones. Then you will understand righteousness and justice and equity, every good way, for wisdom will enter your heart, and moral knowledge will be attractive to you. And that's, I mean, um, if you attain that in life, that's really something. The moral knowledge is attractive to you because then you're going to be thinking about it all the time. When you're attracted to something, you think about that something all the time. If you're attracted to a new car, you're thinking about it. If you're attracted to a woman, you're thinking about her all the time. So, um, Verse 11 says, discretion will protect you understanding will guard you. So it'll, it'll provide benefits for you and it'll keep you from doing evil. In verse 7 it says the Lord stores up effective counsel. So he's like a hard drive. But we have to download that counsel continuously. We have to be hooked up to that hard drive and, and taking it into ourselves and making it part of us. Verse 12 says, to deliver you from the way of the wicked, from those speaking perversely, who leave the upright paths to walk on dark ways, who delight in doing evil, they rejoice in perverse evil, whose paths are morally crooked, and who are devious in their ways. Now the Hebrew word for paths here is uh, magala. And it's the same word that is used in Psalm 23. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. When you're, when you're going from Jerusalem out into the Negev, into the wilderness, going towards the, the Dead Sea, you pass these hills. They're, they're pretty large hills. <clears throat> they have these circles that go around them to the top. And you look at it, that looks like a ribbon going around and around to the top. And what they are is, they're the, the paths of the sheep. The sheep would go up to the top, to the table. He prepares the table before, before me. Though the table would be the top of the mountain where they would go. And, and the shepherd would prepare an area for them to be able to eat the grass. But the way they get up there is by staying in these paths. And um, they're, these paths are very easy for the shepherd to see. We can see them from, from you know, if you're going past in a bus or a car, you're going to see these things. But the sheep don't get it because the sheep are kind of stupid. And they wander off the paths. But the shepherd can get them back on the path. And... If you think about it, the Bible calls us sheep a lot, and Jesus is the good shepherd, and he says, my sheep hear my voice, and they, and, and they come to me. So, um, we are a lot like sheep, and we need to be kept on the, on the proper path, on the proper magala. Verse 16 says, to deliver you from the adulteress, from the sexually loose woman who speaks flattering words. So, uh, oh yeah, kryptonite for men. Um, you know, hey big boy. Hey big boy. Now, I want to say this. This is to the guys my age, maybe a little younger, maybe even a little older. I'm almost 60 now. Um, if you're standing there with a pot belly and bad breath, and some 20-year-old girl is telling you that she's attracted to you? She's probably not. And 
women can can fall for the same thing. They can be turned aside by a man who maybe gives them a kind word or or spend some time listening to them. Maybe at home they're not being listened to and they and they get listened to, you know, or maybe they never get complimented and here's some guy who's saying, "Oh, you look beautiful today." We we have to really guard against these things because they're very real. They're they're in our world. They're they're here every day. And they're not shouting from the 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 corners. They're they're in the back alley going, Psst, "You want to have some fun?" Verse 17 says, "Who leaves the husband from her younger days?" So we're talking about the adulteress and forgets her marriage covenant made before God, for her house sinks down to death, and her paths lead to the place of the departed spirits. None who go into her will return, nor will they reach the paths of life. So you will walk in the way of good people, and will keep on the paths of the righteous, for the upright will reside in the land, and those with integrity will remain in it. But the wicked will be removed from the land and the treacherous will be turned away from it. So you see like a pattern in this book. <laughs> the pattern is pretty clear. Steer clear of men who try to lead you into evil and women who try to steer you into infidelity because this is written to my son. He, Solomon's always saying my son. Um, and, um, you know, but there's plenty of practical applications for women. Just flip it. Every time we hear my son, hear my daughter, every time it says stay away from a woman, you want to stay away from a man. Or, well, these days, maybe even a woman. Um, so we just saw that seeking wisdom can keep you on the right path and off the wrong path. So let's review where we are right now in the, in the book of Proverbs. Solomon was a, um, a great man, a great king who was given all the wisdom in the world and didn't always use it. In fact, it was sort of like he got away from it incrementally over time. We know that wisdom calls out from the street corners and um, but those who would call you away from wisdom call out to you in the dark. They don't want everybody to hear it because if people were going like, hey, you know, it's time to do something really bad for you that you're going to think is fun at first. They're not going to say that in front of everybody because everybody's going to tell you, like, no, don't do that. That's, that's not, <laughs> you don't want to do that. Um, we're to wear our teachings like crowns and necklaces. And, um, and, and this is so what you believe is everybody will see that. They're not going to see a perfect person. You know, if you're listening to this because you want to hear from a perfect person, you won't be listening very long. You will be looking for somebody else, and you won't find that perfect person except for one, and, uh, and hopefully we're seeing him in this study. Um, in other words, live the life. Live the life that, that we're studying here. Live the life that you find in your devotions when you're reading the Bible, the life that you find when you pray, the life that you find when, when you fellowship with people and you're around fellow believers and, you're, and some of that rubs off on you. Live that life. Um, we've learned to, to watch out who you hang out with and watch out who you listen to. We've learned that listening to wisdom will teach you how to fear God and will give you more and more knowledge of God and His ways. Now, your homework this time is a little more involved than usual. What I'd like you to do, and this can be very informal, this doesn't have to be in some fancy book that you go to a store and buy. Um, I want you to journal a little bit. And maybe you've already been doing this. Maybe, maybe in the homework that we've had, you've said, okay, well, let me write all this down. Um, maybe you've been 
keeping score. But what we want to do is we want to keep score in some sort of order. We want to see a, an orderly progression of where God's taken us. I think it could be very fruitful to do this. Um, a place to write down prayers as we're studying or as you're in your devotions. Because this won't just be for this. This 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 will be something that you might even want to carry around with you all all the time wherever you go so if somebody says oh you know would you pray for me I'm gonna be in the hospital you can write that down hey I'm, I'm gonna pray for that person because um, you might forget so the reason I say that is because I often forget and I hate to say to somebody I'll pray for you if I don't have time to pray right then and then realize like a week later who that person had their surgery and I forgot to pray for them. Um, maybe write down Bible verses that stand out. Write down, um, and of course, the homework from each week. Because we're going to branch off into some pretty interesting things and things, and you know, none of this is mandatory. Um, but what I, what I, my vision for it, and, and I've done something very, exactly what I'm talking about for, um, for several years. And my vision is as we go through the book of Proverbs that we will allow God to, to keep us more and more on his magala, on his path, on, that, he, that we would allow him to lead us in the paths of righteousness. Until next time, God bless.